Thank you. You you yourself are no stranger to authoritarianism, nor to the to the media complex and how it works. But I, I assume that many of us, or and many even in our audience, are not um, trained and adept at dissecting uh, when they when they're seeing a legitimate news reporting versus when there is uh, a secret agenda potentially behind that. So, do you have any tips, any clues that people should look for when they're watching TV or following the news that can help them discern? whether uh, they're being misled in any way whatsoever? Yeah, it's a great question. You know, one of the things that shapes how I look at things is prior to becoming a journalist, when I was a lawyer, I wasn't particularly political, but I paid attention to political news to like an ordinary extent. I lived in Manhattan. I subscribed to the New York Times. I read the New York Times in the morning. I subscribed to the Atlantic and the New Yorker. I read those on the weekend. You know, I thought I was reasonably politically informed that I was consuming high-end political news. And then when I started being able to work on politics and journalism full-time, and I didn't have to rely on what those news outlets were telling me was happening about events or what documents said, I had the time and the ability to go read those documents myself or to go analyze those events on my own. I realized that there was this enormous gap between reality and what they had convinced me was true. That these are highly propagandized models of disseminating information, not because they are villainous people, you know, rubbing their hands together in some like James Bond, like villain way, consciously aware that they're doing it but because they're immersed in these institutions and they believe the things they're saying, but what they're saying in these institutions are so siloed off and have such clear interests that um, everything that they're, processing the prism through which they're processing the world is so subjective and so specific that it's just automatically distorting what it is that they're understanding and then what it is that they're telling you. So obviously not every person can have the, the ability to spend 10 hours a day or 11 hours a day reading documents. But nonetheless, I think it's imperative that we work to see things critically, right? Like when I think about college, and the experience I had in college, the thing that was most valuable is not any specific thing that someone told me. It was the ability to start understanding how to read things on my own and to ask whether or not what I'm being told was true. And one of the most, I think, important innovations of new media journalism, journalism that migrated from the written page where there's enormous space constraints to the internet where there are no space constraints is journalists are expected when they refer to a document to provide a link to the document that you can click on and go read yourself. And the more invested you are in a particular opinion, the more strongly you feel you're right about something, I think that's exactly when you ought to A, seek out really smart people who see things completely differently than you and listen to it with an open mind. And if you are convinced afterwards, it'll only fortify your convictions, but also make sure that you are believing things because you yourself have verified the foundations of those beliefs and not because so many people around you have drummed those into your head that you just start assuming they're true without actually knowing. 